Welcome back to Your Legislation. We're back again with Randy Fry. So you've made it back in. We made it back in. It's, uh, we've had a busy week and uh, just completed the fourth week of the 2020 legislative session. So now, out of all that last week, what all can you give them a recap as to what's happened so far? We can. Uh, Come on up Monday is the final day of the first half of legislative session. It's known uh, as the third reading deadline. And so any bill that's a House bill had, would not have passed the House by Monday is most likely dead. Um, that not totally, it can show up as an amendment in another bill in the Senate, but most of them that haven't been heard are dead. But we've had a very uh, busy week. We passed some really good legislation. And uh, so we're looking forward to getting, uh, getting our House bills over to the Senate and those Senate bills uh, over to the House and start over. That's, that's good. And one of them you've got going to the Senate mm -hmm. is House Bill 1070, right. which is distracted driving. That's right. And you put some things in place that kind of help people right. be a little more attentive to what they're doing. Well, well, Debbie, this is a kind of device that a person would use if, uh, according to that bill, if that bill passes. Right. Now, your viewers understand that this bill will have to go to the Senate. Yes. And the Senate will have to approve it. And then it will have to, uh, if it's amended, come back to the House and then go to the governor for his signature. So we're a ways away. But um, a lot of your listeners have probably heard about this bill by now. Uh, and they uh, are probably wondering uh, why, why uh, distracted driving as far as cell phones? Why not uh, something else? Why not right. another uh, distraction? And we know there are plenty of them. Uh, we've all driven down the road and seen somebody who's reading a newspaper or a book, maybe a man shaving, a lady putting on makeup, uh, things like eating a hamburger can be a distraction or smoking a cigarette or a dog or something like that. So why pick cell phones? Well, the biggest reason is that's the biggest offender. Right. And so we could have gone after a numerous things, but what we wanted to do was at least start with the biggest offender, and that's those who text and drive or talk on their phone and drive. Now, having said that, if that bill passes, you can still use your cell phone oh, in your yes. car to talk on it. Uh, you can voice text if you want to. What you can't do is hold it in your hand. So a device like this that, in my case, fits in a cup holder mm -hmm. in a vehicle, uh, mounts your cell phone to it. So you could set that cell phone in that cup holder and use uh, wireless. You could use a, a device like a Bluetooth, sometimes Bluetooth built in your vehicle, or other technology that may come along as long as you don't hold it in your hand. We heard more than two hours of testimony on this bill. Uh, no one testified against it. Right. We heard from uh, people who had been maimed, uh, two different people lost a leg uh, on a motorcycle because uh, someone was distracted with their cell phone and hit them and, and uh, they lost a leg. Uh, we heard from a lady who actually wrecked her own car, uh, was no one around her, and she wrecked her car because she was uh, using her cell phone and was distracted, and she's a paraplegic. Right. We heard from a mom of a student at Jacksondale High School, which is up here in Ripley County, uh, I believe it was 2013, her daughter was killed in a car accident because she was using her cell phone while she was driving. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to save lives. And we're trying to save innocent lives. It's not just the person who might be using the phone. It's the innocent person that they hit yes. uh, and, and hurt while the, they're distracted. So that's the crux of the bill. That's what it's for. Uh, you simply cannot use your phone if you're holding it. You can use it if it's uh, mounted in a uh, in your vehicle, or it can even be itself in a cup holder. It doesn't have to have a device like this, but it just can't be in your hand. Right, and there's several different types of devices. There's some that clip into your CD player, right. some onto your vent of your mm -hmm. your air conditioner, and then, like you said, the cup holder ones. Well, so. this is just an example, uh, right. Debbie. You can, you can get whatever ways. works for you, right. or if you just don't want to buy one at all, you can just leave it laying in the console. And, and I, I have to tell you that I'm guilty of doing it, I, and I'm going to make a huge change now and not do it anymore. But uh, the safest thing to do is turn it off or put it in the trunk. But we're not going to do that. Um, most of us spend large time, amounts of time on the road. And so in, in those instances, we need to make sure that we're not distracted while we're talking. Right. And it'll be safer for everybody. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. great. Yeah. Now we're going to move on to House Bill 1120, and mm -hmm. that has to do with educational credits 
but it's in a different right. format right. than others. So well, how's that work? Well, Debbie, educational credits in this case refers to someone who's incarcerated. Yes. And in the past, um, if you were to get a high school diploma or its equivalent of GED, you would earn good behavior credit to, to earlier release. Well, what we did this year is we've changed it to uh, tailoring to the inmate the typical, uh, the, the type of training that that inmate would be able to use in order to make a good living when they get out. Oh, yeah. So they might that become an electrician, they might become a plumber, might become a, a heating and air conditioning. All of those things would be uh, an option uh, in, in this new program for the inmate. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, again, uh, we know that uh, d one of the biggest factors in whether someone returns to, to jail or not is uh, can they provide for themselves? Can they uh, have a reasonable housing? Do they go back into that same situation right. they came from? And what we're hoping is that by providing them with the opportunity to make a living, they won't go back. And Well, that'll give them the tools and, and if they choose to use them, that will be beneficial for them and everybody around them. Well, absolutely. And, and you know, I'm sure there'll be some who won't, right. but there'll be a lot who do. And, you know, uh, jail overcrowding is one of my uh, biggest uh, things I'm working on. And this is one of those kind of things that will ease jail overcrowding right. as far as folks coming back. Well, let's hope they, they utilize it. Let's, let's hope that's so. That's the goal. That is the goal, yes. Well, now we're going to move on to 1189 mm -hmm. House Bill. And that has to do with the firefighter foam. I don't know if some people realize mm. there is a chemical in some of the foam. That's true. That is not good for the environment. So firefighting foam, I'm sure your viewers have seen firefighting foam. Firefighting foam is used in certain instances uh, where water doesn't isn't the best choice. Right. Uh, for instance, an aircraft fire. You'll see on television if an aircraft's on fire, they just cover it with a blanket of foam. And that's exactly what it is, is a blanket. Uh, the same thing with a petroleum fire, same thing with a, a chemical fire. In order to smother the, uh, the burning uh, substance with this blanket of foam. Now, the, the blanket smothers the oxygen yes. and the fire goes out. Well, we found out that there are chemicals within the foam that cause cancer. And from what I'm told, they never go away once they're in the soil. And so what we're saying is you can use this product to extinguish a fire. It's the best chemical to ex extinguish a fire in these cir circumstances that I mentioned. However, if you're doing training, oh, yes. training only, you have to capture any of the runoff foam. Mm -hmm. So we do that all the time as firefighters. Your viewers probably by now know I'm a retired fire department. And so if you were doing hazardous materials training and you would have to capture any of the hazardous runoff. And that's the same thing as this. Right. If you were doing training, you just have to make sure it doesn't go down the drain or in the soil and you pick it up and take it with you. Well, you can do more training exercises that way and not have to worry about what is going to be left behind. You, you, well, you just can't. I mean, we know now that it's causing cancer and right. we don't want that to, for any of our citizens. I mean, in the fire service, our job is to save lives and that's, that's what we're trying to do here by not letting this product get into our water and, in, and into our soil. Now, you have another bill that's coming out that's 1004, mm -hmm. and it's to do with medical billing. Now, sometimes billings, we don't know Boy. what's in our bill ahead of time. Boy, that so happens. Uh, that happens often, Debbie. Yes, and, it does. And what happens, and what, what House Bill 1004 is designed to do is uh, to do uh, put an end to what we call surprise billing. And these aren't good surprises. No, they're not. And so what happens currently is if uh, someone has a medical procedure, a scheduled medical procedure, not emergency, that's not included, but if it's a scheduled medical procedure, you may go to your hospital in your uh, network. You may have a doctor in your network, but you may have a, a, an assistant, an anesthesiologist, someone else, who participates in your procedure, however, they're not in network. And most networks are either 90% to the insurance, 10% to the individual, or 80-20. But in a lot of cases, uh, out of networks, 50-50. And these, this can result in a pretty high, unexpected bill oh, yes. surprise. And so what we're trying to do is put an end to that. Now, that doesn't say that an individual could not have the procedure and be willing to pay this individual to do whatever they do, the surgeon or whomever, as long as they consent to it. 
We want to make sure that the individual who says, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that even though I know my insurance isn't going to cover it. I understand I'm going to get a bill, but I want the quality of this individual in my, in my surgery or in my procedure. Right. You can do that, but you have to let them know well in advance, and I'm talking it more in advance than when you're laying on the operating table, um, that this individual is not in their network. Well, that, that'll help a lot when you get home and you're recovering and you right. open a bill and you're shocked. Well, you are shocked. You're shocked anyway. Uh, Health care costs are skyrocketing and we've got other uh, legislation this year, maybe we can talk about later on, that are also trying to address that. But in this case, this is specifically designed to uh, prevent that surprise bill you thought was an 80-20 or a 90-10 and it came uh, much higher and it, those can be devastating. Uh, those kind of bills can be thousands of dollars and they can just really ruin uh, your recovery uh, from your uh, illness is bad enough but uh, to right. then to be so upset over the finances it makes it worse. I, I think that'll be very helpful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, would for me, if I'm going through something like that, I want to know ahead of time what's going to be expected of me. Me too, and so. uh, and I, I think it'll be a, a really a good help. It's uh, it's one of many things that we're trying to do to to rein in the cost of healthcare. Well, that's great. And we're going to move on to something that's fun, yeah. something you guys do at the State House, mm -hmm. and it's called Suits and Sneakers. Suits and Sneakers. We do that every year. And what Suits and Sneakers is, is we, uh, as the members of the General Assembly, will wear tennis shoes with our suits. Now, you can imagine that doesn't look so great. But uh, we do that to bring awareness to uh, cancer. And we work with the American Cancer Society to promote uh, cancer research and cancer uh, treatments right. options and uh, just making sure everyone uh, understands the risk and that there is treatment available and uh, the various procedures that they can go through to, to detect cancer early. So it's all about uh, getting uh, folks aware uh, that the cancer is uh, very real, is a killer, and we want to, wanted to show our support for it. So we have a little fun with it. Uh, white tennis shoes and a black suit don't necessarily go too well together, but it's all in fun. It is, and, and that's put on by the National Cancer Society, American right? Cancer American Society. Cancer Society. Mm -hmm. So they do in that every In conjunction year. with American Cancer Society and the General Assembly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, that is great that you all kind of participate in something that's important. So. Well, we do we do fun things as well. Right. Uh, the great majority of the work that we do there is serious, but we do a lot of fun things too. Now, next week is the last week for you all to hear a bill. So what all are you going to be doing next week? So the last week for the first half, for, for House bills to be in the House, Senate bills in the Senate. Right. Uh, so on Monday, that's it. So on Tuesday, uh, we begin doing what uh, the speaker calls passing down a bill list. And so Senate bills that pass the Senate come to a representative. And, of course, the first half, House bills, we author. And now our bills are over in the Senate, and the Senate bills that come over, we sponsor. So you're known as the House sponsor of a right. Senate bill or the author of a House bill. So all those Senate bills that come over, they come to various representatives that the senator chooses. Yes. Just like I choose a senator that will take my legislation when it goes to the Senate. Same kind of thing. And so the bill list will start to be passed down. Those bills are then assigned to a committee by the speaker. And then we start the whole process over of hearing Senate bills in our House committees. House bills will be heard in Senate committees. And to be honest with you, Deb, the process gets much busier. Yes. Because like I have to run my bills through the Senate. I have to run the senator's bills that were sent to me in the House, and I still have to run my own committee. So um, it's a lot like that firefighting we talked about. <laughs> it's kind of busy. It, it's a revolving door. Well, it's fast. It's it, fast and furious, and it's a short session as well. We'll only have three committee hearings for Senate bills, so uh, probably the most of the Senate bills that could come out of my committee would be 10. Probably not that many, but that would probably be the most. And uh, so there uh, just, just isn't much time uh, to spend on these bills. But you all seem to accomplish quite a bit while you're there. And, you know, Debbie, that brings up a really good point, and if we could go into that a little bit, I, I'd like to. And that is the committee process. Uh, many people don't understand the, the committee process, and, and rightly so. If you're not involved in the General Assembly, you probably right. don't. So what happens in the committee process is we take testimony on a particular subject. Uh, whatever the subject is, you will have a list of people. Some of them are lobbyists paid to be there to testify for or against. 
Some of them are interested parties from the industry. Some of them are just interested citizens that want their voices heard. All are welcome to testify. Uh, and what we do is we take, as we would say, a deep dive into what does this actually do? What is this proposed amendment, this proposed legislation? What does it really do? Uh, there's something I say a lot, and that is, does the content of the legislation match the intention of the author? Mm, yes. It can mean so much if they don't. And so the author believes it does this, but when you look under the hood, as they say, it really does that. And the wording usually determines absolutely. How, it, how it's brought across. Absolutely. But sometimes it's based on what code is being uh, assigned to the language. Yes. Maybe it's the wrong code. Maybe it's just flat a bad idea that looks good until you look under the hood and go, whoa, we can't do this. Repercussions. Absolutely. Are and the committee chairman, of which I chair the Veterans Affairs and Public Safety Committee, I spend a lot of time, and this next week, that's what I'll spend time on, reading bills and trying to find out what does this bill really do? I know what I'm being told it does. What does it really do? The other side of that is I'll begin to hear from constituents and, and those who are paid to be at the State House. They either like it or they don't. If they don't like it, Sometimes they just don't want it to. They want it to go away, or sometimes they want it adjusted. Um, now we're in the second half, so a lot of that already took place in the Senate. Right. So if you got somebody coming to you now that's trying to get you to further adjust the senator's bill, you really want to look at it. There must have been a reason they didn't do it in the Senate. Uh, maybe they didn't think of it. Maybe this uh, the author doesn't agree with the person who wants to change their bill. Right. So I will have to then contact the senator and go, uh, you know, this is a proposed change to your bill. What do you think about that? Did you talk about this in your committee? And a lot of times they'll say, yes, we did, and we, we rejected it. Well, then I, I know I don't have to hear it again. It's already been vetted in the Senate. So a lot of behind-the-scenes work will go into the next 10 days or so uh, before we really then get busy on the House floor again. Well, you got your work cut out for you. We do. Uh, I love it, uh, but it, it it's, uh, makes for long days, but, you know, that's what we signed up for. It, it is, and you all seem very dedicated when you're there. And I don't know anyone in the General Assembly on either side of the aisle who's there for the wrong reason. We uh, sometimes disagree on what the right policy is, but I don't know anyone who's there for the wrong reason. Everyone that I know uh, puts in long hours, and they do it because they're uh, a good citizen and they want to make their state better. That's great. Well, we're going to have you back again next week, right? I hope so. Awesome. Well, I look forward to I look forward finding to out more too. of the process. Well, this time next week, the House bills will be done, the Senate bills will be done, and they will have flipped, and we'll be off to the races again. <laughs> well, we'll try to keep up. I don't know how good we're going to do It's going to be tough. It will be. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Well, you're welcome. And we especially appreciate our sponsors for making all this possible. And we thank you for watching.